Oh, all right, cool. Um, yeah, we still got to charge our big bad battery. So there are a few points to it, and we'll start off with the rules. So we're looking at the rules right here, and let's just go through it real quick. All chargers must be presented at electrical tech inspection. Oh, right. Okay, actually, let me start a little broader. So in terms of an EV charger, um, EFC 2500, uh, they do have like dedicated battery chargers that you, that you can use for this sort of stuff. Mostly, I think it's just in terms of like power, power ratings. So for example, this one that I have on screen right now is what we are using for next year. It seemed to be a reasonably popular choice among different teams but I'm pretty sure we didn't do an actual like, you know, in-depth look because we were just kind of going for like whatever works. Um, but plugs into a wall. Is that the image? Yep, plugs into a wall. You can see it looks like a massive heat sink because it probably is. Um, and you can select your specific model depending on different parameters, most importantly of which is the output voltage. And as you might have guessed, we went for this one. Max output voltage, 417 volts, 7 amps, um, except that's for 230 volts AC, which is your, so we'd be charging at 3 amps. Um, yeah, yeah. Really odd one out. Odd ones out again. Um, right, but wide AC input voltage range. So unlike ATX power supplies, there's probably not a little switch on it. It might be automatic. I mean, there might be a switch, I don't know. Um, but IP46, um, IP, I think the first number is water and the second number is dust. So uh, you probably have to check the uh, general protocols because the whole IP standard, they have it all listed online. And it's not necessarily a lower number it means worse protection. They're just tested for different things. How much do um, we need to really worry about that? You know what? We got time. Uh, we'll just look at IP ratings. Well, I was, I was more thinking, is, won't most of our charging be done in, in an indoor setting? Or we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about, um, I, not, maybe not so much water, but dust. You know, but um, even then. Yeah, I don't really, I don't think we really, oh wait, the first one's dust. Nice. Yeah. So we really care about the second digit. Um, and six is protection against high, direct high pressure jets. Nice. So that's good news for us. We're chilling. Operating temp, cool. Everything else, yeah, I don't care. Um, the other nice thing, okay. There's some quirks to this charger. The nice thing is that everything is in English. The not so nice thing is it seems like there are like several different versions of like the manual slash data sheet and they all ha mostly overlap in terms of information, but I don't know, there seem to be some gaps, but there's previous documentation from other teams and I have a feeling it'll be easier to contact this company seeing as they have a base in California. So yeah, this is the charger that we're using and the output is a DC voltage. And so as you could imagine, um, there are some rules on it. The charger, um, I don't know what they mean by sealed after approval. Uh, we'll see. Ooh. Um, must be galvanically isolated AC input to DC output. I think uh, reading through the data sheet would probably confirm that. I don't think there's any um, any way that it wouldn't be isolated if it's a commercial product. I mean, these aren't student built, I hope. Um, if the charging charger housing is conductive, it must be connected to the earth ground of the AC input. Um, so if it has a third prong on the wall plug, that probably satisfies that, you know, I hope. Isolated and covered. Um, okay, so the charger connectors must incorporate a feature so that the connector becomes live only when connected to the accumulator. So by that, they mean that there should be some sort of interlock. 
sort of with the HVD, how there's like the main connections and there's also the interlock. So they're saying that whatever connector you use should have an interlock like that too. So you can like send a signal to your car. Uh, orange leads, whatever. Um, now, let's see, the rest of the charging parts are somewhat overlapping with existing parts on the car. So for example, they say the charger must have two TSMPs installed. If you remember, TSMP stands for Tractive System Measurement Point. And we saw that in the HV enclosure. Um, and I think the rules for that are the same. Let me check if, yep. So they link you to, um, they link you to 6.8.2, which if we double check in the OneNote, boom, TSMPs lit two banana jacks that exist on the side of the charging cart slash car um, that they can plug into with a multimeter and check the voltage. So they're basically saying here, you got to have two on the charger. Now, in case you're wondering, the charger is probably going to exist on a separate like cart that will have all of these features. So the cart will contain the charger, it'll have the TSMPs, it'll have the alternative shutdown circuit. So is this the same cart that has to be like the runaway cart? Yeah. Yeah. AKA a wheelbarrow. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. Yep. That's probably what we'll have to do. Let's see. If it has to be non-flammable and non-conductive, then we could make it out of wood and just line the inside with Nomex. Yeah. Might work. not work out so well, but we could also make it out of metal and line it, line it with Nomex. Either way, I have a feeling it's not gonna it's it's not gonna end up as good as it's not as easy of it uh, as a project as one might think, considering how. The push bar seemed to be a point of struggle on IC for whatever reason. It's a bar with two wheels that jacks up the back of your car. I don't get it. What's so hard about that? Anyways, <sighs> um, the charger must include a charger shutdown button. Uh, that is one of these mushroom kill switch. One of these bad boys. They're pretty satisfying. You slap them in to cut the cut the connection, and then you twist, and they pop out. Wait, so where where would this be? Where, was this on the previous car? Um, yeah, it was built into the Mingda charger. Uh, in fact, we can hop oh, over I real remember. quick. Yeah. Do they have it? They don't have a picture of it. Good night. Um, so last time we had a prepackaged battery and charger from a company that kind of ripped us off. Um, and as you can see right here, it's all built in. We basically had them build a lot of our high voltage system. Kind of, kind of pooey. Um, anyways, just some boring details about the charging shutdown button. If we use one of those switches, we're fine. Should be good. Um, have to put a sticker next to it. No biggie. Charging shutdown circuit is the main um, attraction here. So with the whole charger thing, you have two components. You have the charging shutdown circuit, which is like the circuit board part of it. And you've got the integration into the whole cart and all. So this is actually a really good project if you want to design a board. Wait, what's the project? Sorry. Oh, um, so the charging the whole charging deal, uh, I sort of view it as like two separate, I guess, I don't know, skill sets, uh, focuses. You've got the charging shutdown circuit, which is like more like circuit, PCB, electronics. And you've also got like the integration of all the physical parts, like the buttons, the TSMPs, like designing the cart, um, integrating, like mounting all the electrical stuff properly and sort of making it waterproof, I think. Um, so it's got, a, I think it's, it's got a good mix actually, underrated. Um, this is a good, this is a good project and it's pretty self-contained. So 
if you're someone who likes to like kind of just work at your own pace, um, you'll probably work with one mech design person, but nothing you do here will depend on anything else getting finished, sort of, which is pretty darn nice um, in a lot of cases. In comparison to everything else that happens. Yeah, yeah. You'll have your own little section in the Gantt chart, presumably. That is me assuming that there is going to be a Gantt chart. Um, cool. So a lot of the charging shutdown circuit is overlapped with the normal shutdown circuit. Um, real quick, let me start opening that up in Altium in the background. So yeah, the PCB is it. the charging area. And this is all competition specific. It's not, not, not really that important. Uh, anyways, so we'll take a look at that circuit. But I also just want to give you a look at EV19 and like what their system looked like. So you'll notice here you have the main block of the accumulator container and the charger. So you've got your interfaces between, um, you know, your connectors going between both places. And within the accumulator container, you've got all your, um, all your different things. So I'm thinking, let's see, for us, it will probably look very, very similar. Um, you have, oh uh, shoot, maybe I'll steal someone else's uh, clear, clear all drawings. Maybe I'll steal someone else's. Oh man, look at this CAD. Oh my God. This is that's, what you, that's this, packaging. this is what you aspire your CAD for your CAD to look like. It has everything. It's got them. Okay. It doesn't have everything. I don't see any mounting bolts for these PCBs if we're nitpicking over here, but it has most everything CADed out and laid out. This is the beauty of CAD, because um, you'll find that when you try to, you know, lay everything out in your brain, even when, even if you talk it through, there's gonna be stuff you miss. The more that you CAD, the less retroactive uh, covering up and like sketchy stuff you'll have to do. So, wow, this is real fancy. Do they have a block diagram? Oh, oh, beautiful. This sums it up pretty well. Um, actually, sorry, we're going back real quick. So on our car, you see these big connectors right here. We're going to have one of these big connectors that interfaces with, um, so normally these big connectors are plugged into the inverter, but when you're charging, um, the battery is not going to be in the car. It's going to be on the cart. So it won't be connected to any, uh, any of the inverter, motor, none of that garbage. So instead of plugging the inverter into this connector, we'll be plugging the uh, battery charger in. So what does that mean? Well, this means that you've got your batteries over here, your AIRs, which are your main relays, your main switches, um, and you've got your connectors. So um your connectors will connect to the battery and you'll have your main two like you know the main current carrying things you'll also have the little interlock wire as you can see right here and separate from that you'll have external connections that are for example going from like all of this stuff to your charger namely because the way our battery looks is pretty similar to theirs where oh look at that beautiful um where for example something over here like this board would be like part of our bms which is our battery management system so the bms would talk to the charger over can what is can um it is a communication protocol where you have two twisted wires that go between one device to another and they use some serial protocol to talk to each other. Um, another example would be USB. 
Uh, it's a connector, but it's also like a protocol, uh, a, some sort of direction on what order to send all your bits of information in. Um, cool thing about CAN is um, it, every road car, almost every single road car uses it. Like if you, if you have an OBD2 scanner that you plug in under your dash, you'll notice that it's reading like CAN codes. Um, so it's pretty widely used. There's a ton of documentation, but um, that's also one of the features that are, oh, mushroom kill switch. Oh, look, they're all mushrooms. Um, one of our, one of the features that this thing has equipped with can commute, oh, 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 can communication. So you'll have the main connections between the charger and our battery, and you'll also have the um, extra little wire going between uh, the battery management system, which will be inside the battery box and the charger. So what will happen is you'll connect these two together and the charger will wait for a signal coming from the uh, battery management system. I'm pointing at my screen with my hands. This is dumb. Um, to tell the charger, like, everything is okay. Um, there are no faults. Uh, and you can go ahead and start charging. So that signal will be the most, will, be, will trigger the charger to start, you know, pumping current into the battery. And um, as well as, you know, having, making sure that these interlocks are connected as well. You probably have um, one side will be connected to like a, uh, like a what, logic high, so like five volt, you know, output somewhere. And the other one will go to some input on, um, on the BMS. Yeah, on the BMS. Um, cool. Um, does, do you, does like the overall picture of how everything's connected together sort of make sense? More or less, yeah. Cool. Wait, what exactly did the interlocks do again? Oh, yeah. So what will happen with the interlocks is, remember this picture, right? So the main, these two will be, this is just an example. It'll look a little different, but it'll work exactly the same. Actually, this picture down here is perfect. The, the red, and you can see the lugs down here. The red um, describes the, uh, like the main current carrying connections. Those are like thick wires connected. And the blue represents like really a, a separate connector, which in this case is in the middle right here that has thin wires. So the point of this is the thick wires, like when you twist that thing and remove it, obviously you'll break the connection. So current will stop flowing. But there's also an additional like second safeguard of this thin wire, which um, will also get disconnected. Now, the way that that thin wire works is that you'll have, so one end, you'll have the thin wire going like that if we're following the picture, right? One end will go to like a plus five volt like source off of one of the power distribution boards. And the other end will go to an input on the BMS. Um, you can think of the, the BMS is our battery management system and it's got a whole bunch of layers, which I think I'll make another section on. Not think, I will make another section on um, describing the general layout of all of that. But you can sort of just think of it as a really, really fancy Arduino. So this interlock so this is the interlock, and this will go. Uh, this will be five volts connected to one of these input pins on our fancy Arduino. So when you, when everything is working properly, um, when the battery is connected, the interlock is closed. So this will see a high five volt, you know, signal. And when you remove it, it will see a low signal. So that tells it, all right, if you have a low signal, it's disconnected. There will be some programming and probably some circuits that will take that low signal and turn it into a thing that says, all right, stop. It's disconnected. So that's the point of the interlock and sort of how it'll work on a like really rough, rough level. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. 
So I think this was the, the overall picture was what the, some of the people in the class were really struggling with. There were two people working on it. And I think, yeah, this is what they were struggling with because I asked them to make this diagram and they were like, you know, try, I don't think they had actually drawn it out to try and like, you know, work through how this whole thing fit together. So they were like, oh, well, you have the main connector between the charger and the thing, but what else is there? And it's like, oh, you know, there's the extra can connection that's like separate. Um, let's see, what do, what, what is another really important thing? Um, right, the charging shutdown circuit. Oh, this comes into play somewhere, right? Aha. Um, where does it come into play? Great, great question. We'll see. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Na -na 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 -na. Charger port, fault. Oh, I had a great drawing of it somewhere else, but hooey. Oh, okay. Yep, that's it. Um, so first a little bit of background. The way that the shutdown circuit works in the normal car is that there is a, all right, you know what, it's paint time. There is a printed circuit board that is known as the shutdown circuit or SDC. Now, this has a bunch of circ uh, this has a few important uh, like areas on it. So what it does is it takes um, like signals, basically high or low uh, outputs from a few different sources. And it does a little bit of, okay, it doesn't actually do any processing because it's all like hardware, um, but it does a little bit of processing and it outputs another signal. So uh, it's, Let's start with the inputs. Um, on a very basic level, you've got ECU, you've got the EMS, and the IMD. Is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. Those are um, the main things, at least, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bet. OK, this is here, too. Will this open? It's like top 15 bro moments. There's a lot of those, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot more um, than okay, so this is the shutdown circuit. For, this is the charging version. But back to paint. So um, you've got a few of these coming from these locations. The control unit, the battery management system, and the installation monitoring device. I think we went over the IMD. But if you forget, this is the thing that is constantly monitoring the high and low voltage systems to make sure that there is some minimum resistance between the high and low voltage systems on an order of like multiple mega ohms. And if that, if that resistance that's always watching drops a little bit, then it throws a fault signal. So with all of these, their normal operation is, I think around nine volts. I think we set our logic level at around five volts. So normally, all these are getting nine volts. So they're like, all right, cool. High is a good, is like good signal. And when something goes wrong, one of these will drop low and the output of this will stop. So, okay, what is the output you might be asking? So what the board does is it takes all these inputs, these fault signals, and it uses and, and it produces, um, Okay, no, what it does in response to all these input signals is it controls the, okay, it controls some relays, which if you might remember are electrically con controlled switches. So these relays, you apply a voltage, switch closes, take away that voltage, they open. Um, so this controls some relays, right? Uh, what do these relays do? Well, those, I know it seems very complicated, convoluted, and I haven't actually explained this that much before. Um, okay, so you got the shutdown circuit, and in, uh, in a related system, 
you've got the 12, the main like 12 volt line that's going throughout the car. Um, now the big part of the shutdown circuit is, wow, I'll just use theirs. Ha 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 ha. Um, right. So you've got the, this box right here is basically the PCB that I was talking about in paint. And the output of all of these is then transferred to a lot. So this is, this is 12 volts. This is plus 12. So it takes the inputs, processes it, and the output of this PCB is 12 volts. So somewhere you've got an input plus 12 that's from the power distribution board that's you know being passed through here. Now, simply enough, if any of these faults go low, then the internal circuitry on this will cut this five, this, um, this 12 volts. And so this will no longer be 12. The output will, will be zero. Um, right. So in turn, you know, just a little more ec extra background. I'm throwing a lot at you. Um, from the shutdown circuit, it goes through a bunch of like manual, like push button switches that you'll see in various places around the car. Um, and then after all those switches, it will go to the main relays that in sit inside the battery box. So just for reference, while well, look, traveling with me. Those are the, these chunky fellas, which are the primary like ways in which the battery connects to everything else. So if these two are off, then the cells are essentially isolated from everything else. Um, Right, so this is all to say that the point of this shutdown circuit PCB is to take in inputs and control those relays, control the 12 volt line going to all those relays, going to the AIRs, the accumulator isolation relays, the chunky boys. Cool. Um, did that make sense? I can go over anything if any of it was a little wonky. Good? Good for me. Cool. All right. So all of this is basically to say when we look at, wow, is this kind of hard? Okay, now it's better. When we look at the, um, the existing schematic for the charging shutdown circuit, um, you'll see a few familiar things. Like you, these are the inputs. You've got the uh, IMD fault, the VMS faults. Um, you have the supply 12 volt input to the whole, oh boy, the supply 12 volt input to the whole system. So this is like the, you know, powering everything. This is the signal that actually is really, really easy to see here. It's controlled. Oh, look, one relay, uh, small relay on the board that will control whether this continues on to the next small relay on the board. Wow. Um, and then this goes <laughs> through. Oh, what? Charge connector interlock. There's the interlock coming into play. Mm -hmm. And the charger e-stop, which is a fancy way of saying mushroom button. Um, and then, so this essentially, easy way to think of it is uh, 12 volts from, um, what do you call it? Battery cart or some source. Yeah, I think we might need an extra low voltage source for this thing. Um, source, Wait, and why? then, what's up? Why would you need an extra low voltage source for that? Um, I might be thinking of, um, yeah, yeah, no, we do. So um, on the car, the turning on sequence is, like you turn on the low voltage system and then it will, all the you know hardware will get into its place and you'll have to manually reset some buttons for these faults. Um, I won't go into that too much right now, but essentially you need to be able to turn on the low voltage in order to turn on the high voltage. And on the car, that's actually also a rules requirement. So because of the way that everything is designed, we'll need to provide a similar existing low voltage source for the charging shutdown circuit, printed circuit board. Um, so that's only 
that's only for when it's charging, right? Correct. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, which I mean, in that case, could just be like a, a power supply. Yeah, or... yeah, actually, uh, I think it could be a power supply. Um, uh, this is something we'll have to double check. So um, I'll come back to that once I confirm. Mm -hmm. um, but you need a low voltage power source. Um, let me think. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. But the gist of it is basically you start from this corner, powers the whole board, all that jazz. Um, IMB fault and BMS fault. So we'll have another low voltage connector on the battery box, the accumulator container that'll connect to the shutdown circuit board. Um, and then you can see down, down here, after everything passes through, that 12 volt signal controls the main relays, the, a, the accumulator isolation relays. Um, so it's kind of exactly backward. Well, this whole circuit works the same way, but the flow of current, as you can imagine, is going from the charger into the battery as opposed to out. Now, um, in case you're wondering about balancing, uh, FYI, when you have a bunch of batteries in you know, whatever array you have them in series parallel arrangement, um, no, series, um, you need to balance them, AKA make sure that they're all at the same voltage level and that they're all charging evenly. Um, because what will happen is they'll, they will charge unevenly just because there are slight differences from you know, cell to cell with different internal resistances and you know, I don't know, chemistry garbage. Um, and so they all charge up a little differently. And extra little tidbit, what balancing does is you have a circuit that's monitoring all of these voltages, which our BMS is doing. And it will manage all of those and bring them all to the same voltage level. Um, so that is a BMS sort of deal. So we won't worry about the details of that right now. But I think uh, I actually think this schematic is um, it's pretty pretty easy to understand. It should be. I think it's just about finished. Like you know, for ESFX, what uh, what do you call it? inspection. So that's pretty good. Um, is there anything else I wanted to, so we went through the overall system. I talked about the charger a little bit and I talked about the shutdown circuit. Um, I'll have a more clear like block diagram for our system. Um, but uh, real quick, talking about the class people that were working on this, I put together the zip file that I put up in the Slack that mm -hmm. I basically went and cut out all the relevant parts from the 2019 ESF, Michigan's ESF, and Wisconsin's ESF. So you don't have to go digging through the whole entire like 50 plus page document. Uh, and instead you can just look through, you know, four pages here, four pages here, four pages here. Um, and I'll have the rules updated as well. So yeah, there's still a lot of details that I need to add into the yet empty OneNote page. Oh. Um, but on the bright side, <sighs> this was a project that people worked on. And because of that, oh, that's the wrong one. EP20, battery, question mark? Uh, nope. HV hump question mark. Nope. Um, let's see. Motor stuff, inverter, electrical sub teams. Wait a second. Hold up. Let me search shut down. Um, ah. Let's see, this was updated January 7th, 2019. Nope, not that one. Ah, all right. I will add this document in. I will throw this link in the Slack real quick, just so people have it. This documents Sarah and Will's 
journey through the shutdown circuit. Um, I think there's also a few lectures on it. Oh yeah, so they actually got to making a PCB, um, <laughs> but we never got to test it, never got to integrate anything. So I don't think we actually ever finished building the PCB either, but wouldn't be opposed to just redoing it anyways. But uh, this document's probably very easy to read because they wrote it and it's just like them journeying through the different parts of it, like looking at what exists, the literature review for all y'all gemstoners out there. Um, methodology, schematic, PCB, operation. Um, so this actually, like they talk about how it's supposed to work. I haven't proofread any of this, but I guess Chabon has. I'm gonna assume he did, considering this is their final report. Um, and they bill the materials, they list all the parts you'll need for it. And I think they talk about summary of progress and future steps. Yeah, see, this was a really promising deal early on because these two are actually like pretty good on yeah. like, getting work done, but Got distracted. Too many people to keep track of. Um, Will was actually my TA for 205. Great TA. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I my remember TA memeing. was Nicole. Yeah. I remember memeing the hell out of him when I was actually in 205. <laughs> but good stuff. Um, so I'll have a OneNote page up. I'll probably re record this. Um, you know, let my feet in Premiere a little bit and actually populate this page. And just so just so y'all know, I'll I'm putting a lot of work in this summer, but once we once we hit the school year, probably gonna dip a little bit in some capacity. Um, whether that be from Turks racing entirely or just doing some nonsense on IC on a not electrically related sub team. We'll see. Yeah. Um, is there anything oh yeah uh, I know Preston hasn't. Uh, Johnny, did you get a chance to start looking at those YouTube videos on Altium yet? Funny thing, um, I had actually seen those videos before. Um, oh yeah, really? Once I checked it out, yeah. I when you told me you had the the um, the <laughs> accent, I was like, oh, this is the guy you were talking about. Yep. But Super yeah. wholesome dude. Cool. Um, did you make it through all the way? Um, just the first two. Okay, no problem. Just keep working through them. Mm -hmm. And once yep. you do, once you finish that, uh, show me the board. And if you're mm -hmm. interested in doing something more advanced, I can hit you. I think I mentioned in the group me, um, but I can hit you with my login for I actually went ahead and like paid for a course from the same people off their website. And initially I was like, all right, hopefully, uh, this works out, but it was pretty cool. I learned a ton and I think I still have it for another month. So All right. if you want to do that, that's cool. Right. Before we head out completely considering it's 10 PM, you know, relative. Okay. Let me stop recording real quick, but 